there was a huge debate recently about whether or not um, women in uh, Britain should be allowed to wear not the Shador or the um, just the scarf, the headscarf, uh, but the all enveloping veil which only allows a slit of this kind. And whether, and this, well, we should, yes, we should allow it because it's Islamic and because the Quran calls for women to cover their head. Now, the Quran doesn't call for women to cover their head. There's no such call in the Quran. There is probably only one society in the region, now, now that the Taliban has been removed, namely Saudi Arabia, which calls for women to have their faces covered. If you went out like that in Turkey or in Tunisia, for example, you would actually be arrested. You're not allowed to do it in Muslim societies of this kind. Yet in London, it's considered that the most extreme must be the norm, lest we be accused of being insensitive to Muslims. This is the way the ratchet gets turned. Um, a, an elected member of the Netherlands Parliament, <coughs> a man called Gert Wilders, was recently d arrested and deported at London Airport and sent back to Amsterdam because he'd made a film criticizing the Islamization of Holland, which is being a, a campaign of, of violence, uh, uh, including the murder of Theo van Gogh, the descendant of the great painter who'd made a, a film about the oppression of Muslim women in, in Amsterdam. Um, our Archbishop of Canterbury, Dr. Rowan Williams, the man who does an almost perfect imitation of a sheep in human form. <laughs> an early objection of mine to Christianity when I was at school was being told that I was a member of a flock. <laughs> I don't know how you chaps and chapesses feel about this. I always felt flock was a bit much, although I know some people of whom it could, could be said. But shepherd, look, we know shepherds don't look after sheep just because they like them, okay? Um, they either want to f or fleece them <laughs> or eat them. Um, the whole thing has always seemed to be a terrible, you'll forgive the expression, I hope, but one has to come out with it. That's how Rowan Williams is to me. And he says that he thinks that the United Kingdom should have Sharia law for Muslims. Oh. No Muslim had demanded this. No Muslim imam had yet felt strong enough to dare demand that there be Sharia law in, in Britain. But the Archbishop of Canterbury says, well, let's make nice. Let's give it to them before they ask for it. Let's cry before we're hurt. Let's concede before it's even been demanded. This is a civilizational question to me. And it must be resisted. And I actually, when I arrived in Atlanta, I turned on the TV, uh, CNN, and the first person I saw was actually Christopher. And I was very alarmed, not at what he was saying, but at what he was speaking against. And that was the notion that there was a serious motion before the United Nations that saying anything critical of Islam would be criminalized. And that's the end of free speech, and it's very dangerous. But perhaps you want to comment on that, because I think you're probably much more astute the uh, UN, observer on it than the I The United Nations non-binding, <coughs> so far non-binding resolution, which has carried now for three years, and was carried again this week, sponsored by Pakistan, a country for which we pay. It isn't really even a country, barely even a state. It's a construct of Muslim partitionism carved out of the body of India wants to tell us what we can say and what we can think in our own country. And it says that we mustn't uh, ever use the word Islam in any sentence that includes the words violation of human rights, for example. Mm -hmm. Now, this is in the week when the government of Pakistan has handed over to the Taliban its most fertile valley, this valley of Swat, 100 miles from the capital, Islamabad, <clears throat> and said, you can run this valley militarily and legally. You have Sharia law and you are the police and the enforcers of it. And you can close all the girls' schools. But we can't say that your religion is anything to do with the violation of human rights. It's preposterous. Your point about the one-way street is very well made, if I may say so. Um, th there are madrasas in, within 50 miles of where I live in Washington, in Virginia. There are Saudi paid for schools that preach violent anti-Semitism, a hatred of the Shia, Muslims, remember, don't ever forget, they hate other Muslims too, uh, of Hindus, of Christians and Crusaders, and of course of atheists. So they've got me, what, three times, I suppose, in, <laughs> in this uh, field of trial. Um, and don't um, worry, it's coming to a place near you. Um, the Qurans that are given out in our prison system to Muslim prisoners by Muslim chaplains, paid for by Saudi Arabia, are Qurans written to the Wahhabi tune. 
They're not just your everyday Quran. They're the Qurans that the Wahhabis want you to read, containing direct incitement. They've been given out with taxpayers' money in the prison system. Militias are forming. Next, you'll have militias of this kind with their own chaplains within the United States Armed Forces. Are you ready for that? Are you ready to have Wahhabi preachers in the U.S. Armed Forces? You better get ready for it, unless you're going to take the James Madison view that there shouldn't be any chaplains in the U.S. Armed Forces to begin with or in the prison system. If you want to pray, you can't stop them. But we cannot have state-subsidized prayer. We cannot have state-subsidized preachers or chaplains. Mm -hmm. Give it up or give it to your deadliest enemy and pay for the rope that will choke you. This is very urgent business, ladies and gentlemen, I beseech you. Resist it while you still can, and before the right to complain is taken away from you, which will be the next thing, you will be told you can't complain because you're Islamophobic. The term is already being introduced into the culture, as if it was an accusation of race hatred, for example, or, or, or bigotry, whereas it's only the objection to the preachings of a very extreme and absolutist religion. Watch out for these symptoms. They are not just symptoms of surrender, very often ecumenically offered to you by men of God in other robes, Christian and Jewish and smarmy ecumenical. These are the, these are the ones who hold open the gates mm -hmm. for the barbarians. The barbarians never take a city till someone <coughs> holds the gates, the gates open for them. And it's your own preachers who will do it for you and your own multicultural authorities who will do it for you. Resist, resist it while you can. And if you wonder what will happen if you don't, look and see how a cricket team in Middlesex in England had to change its name by force last week because it was called and had been for years the Middlesex Crusaders. Look and see how stories about little pigs can't be taught to children in English schools anymore lest offense be taken by the religion of peace. Resist it while you can. It's funny how the fish rots from the head. I mean, we mentioned the Archbishop of Canterbury. <coughs> ca caving in on Sharia, the Prince of Wales, the chinless, bat-eared, <laughs> elder son of Her Majesty the Queen, a man with no taste in women as far as I can see, uh, the whole job is waiting for his mother to die, um, will, on the, uh, when, that, when Her Majesty's heart ceases to beat, will on that, at that instant become head of the state, head of the armed forces, and head of the church. A faith. This is what you get if you found the National Church on the family values of Henry VIII. But it's not as we did. And he says that he wants to be not just head of the Church of England, but head of all faiths. Country. And with King Fahd of Saudi Arabia, has built a gigantic Wahhabi Madrasa mosque in North London, where were housed the man in whose honor you have to take off your shoes every time you go to the airport, Richard Reed, well known overnight guest there. There were housed two or uh, four, I think, of the 9 11 hijackers. Uh, a pest house in the, in the middle of London, paid for by Saudi money, and uh, enjoying the, the patronage of um, His Royal Highness Prince Charles. Uh, uh, it's a trison, a very high level trison, by, by those whose responsibility it is uh, to safeguard and to uh, uphold what we used to think were the same values. They've sold, they've sold them out in an attempt to show how friendly to Islam they can be.